My name is Ruth Goldman. I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio in the year 1965. So-called race riots were taking place all over the country. But it wasn't until I was in my mid-twenties that someone told me I was the product of a mixed marriage. It's not what you think, though. This is my mother's family, Eastern European Jews from Lithuania and Austria, who immigrated to this country in the late 1800s. And this is my father's family, German Jews, who immigrated to this country in the mid-1800s. Just to clarify, my mother's family were Eastern European Jews, and my father's family were German Jews. Forty years and a couple hundred miles doesn't seem like much, but you'd be surprised. The differences when the Eastern European Jews came over, they didn't want to assimilate. The German Jews' goal was to assimilate. They might have as well not have been on the same planet. We used to decorate our Christmas tree and the rabbi's sons used to come up and help. My best friends are Jewish people, but I was very much against the whole Jewish group who just did nothing but Jewish fundraising for Jewish causes. The German Jews founded every major institution in the city. They were the only ones that were here. That's why they did it. That was important for me as a kid to be try to be part of the general community. My great-grandfather was anti-Zionist, as were a lot of the rabbis at that time. It tended to be confusing. How could you be proud of being Jewish? when at the same time the message was, keep a low profile, don't make anything of it. You were a kike if you were a Jew that you didn't think was any good. I asked Grandma why she celebrated Christmas and Easter, and she said that's the way she was brought up. I often said early on that mine was a mixed marriage, because in Cincinnati terms, it was. I forgot about that mixed marriage comment until 10 years later when my cousin Roger was telling me about going to Cincinnati as a child. I was sent by my parents to Cincinnati to participate in the Christmas parties. Two solid weeks of parties, morning, noon, and night, without stopping. It was almost a Victorian system. And this was a bunch of Jews? Not a bunch of Jews. They were all German oh, Jews. German Jews. Do not ever say Jews, it's only German Jews. So I decided to return to Cincinnati to find out more about my German-American Jewish roots. Cincinnati families have been the chief providers of marriageable human stock for the Jewish elite throughout the country. As a source of yichas, they are not unlike some of the royal families of Europe. To them, one can trace the genealogy of many of the prominent Jewish families in America. It was a different kind of culture. I mean, Eastern European Jews were totally cultured in, in, in Jewish and rabbinic and learning. I mean... The German Jews couldn't hold a candle to them and, and that, but they were more cultured to Goethe and Schilling and all those kinds of things. They weren't necessarily, uh, it wasn't Jewish. They, they, were, they, were, they thought they were Germans. On both sides, my father's side and my mother's side, it was about the same time in the 1840s. Lots of Germans came to the United States because they wanted to avoid military service in Germany. And so there was a, an exodus, especially to Cincinnati, because it reminded them of their homeland, the Rhineland. The river and the hills looked like Germany. So there was a, it wasn't just a Jewish movement, it was a German movement. The German Jewish community, many of them brought over with them the cultural pattern that they were accustomed to in Germany. And that was one where they were Germans first, and my maternal grandfather even uh, said if Hitler wanted 
didn't do what he did to the Jews, uh, he'd be wonderful because he's doing so much for Germany. I think those were the most assimilated people, and I guess that's what it meant. It meant that you were not different. I think people were very afraid of being different. And this was more or less the, the attitude of a large number of people. Um, not so much being pro-German, but uh, saying, I'm an American first. It's important to be Jewish, but it's also important to be part of the American system, be assimilated. That was, that was deeply embedded into, uh, to me as, as, a, as a kid. I am an American first, but I am a Jew. skating and took me to his house for hot chocolate afterwards. They had a Christmas tree, which, which was very funny because I had always thought he was Jewish and I began to wonder. Cincinnati was known for its very, very gala Christmas parties among the German Jewish upper echelon accepted group but we also went to a lot of the Christian parties. So it was never, I never thought of it as being a Jewish thing not to do. It was there, this was our life. We were integrated. We were the kind of people that would have thought if Hitler had come along, we wouldn't be taken because we had so many good Christian friends. It never occurred to me that Jewish people weren't supposed to have a Christmas tree. When I went to Walnut Hills and made Jewish friends, they were all really amazed that I had a Christmas tree. And I remember they would come to my house and help trim it because they had never trimmed a Christmas tree before. As obviously I've matured, I understand that this was really a very German Jewish thing in Cincinnati, that most, most people that I know today did not have Christmas trees and still look at me and say, what do you mean you had a Christmas tree? Every um, Christmas we were invited to the home of relatives of my stepfather. Uh, to sit around their Christmas tree and wish they, they all wished each other Merry Christmas and they passed out presents and they were acting as if this was their holiday and they were all very happy to celebrate the season. It was uncomfortable for me, but all right, why not? They were relatives until I had children. And the last time I went was when my uh, first child was an infant. Uh, when we were invited the next year, I didn't want to hurt their feelings, but I had to tell them no, that my, this year he would be old enough to understand and that he just wouldn't be able to, to catch on to why, how a Jewish family would be going to another Jewish family's house to celebrate Christmas. <music> Religion is the weakest point of these Jews, just as worldly culture is the strongest. For being liberals and professing ideas which logically lead to a denial of all church forms and dogmas, they content themselves with a dry, perfunctory, and rational formula of religion devoid of emotionalism, symbolism, or mysticism. Although the practices described might seem strange to us today, they were part of what some American Jews in the late 19th and early 20th century viewed as the truly progressive tenets of classical Reform Judaism. Isaac M. Wise, a German-educated American immigrant and one of the leaders of American Reform Judaism, was the rabbi for almost 50 years of Cincinnati's congregation K.K. B'nai Yishurn, which later was more commonly known by Wise's name. Wise also founded Hebrew Union College and the Reform Rabbinical Association and presided over the 1885 Pittsburgh Platform, where American Reform rabbis defined what became classical Reform Judaism. 
although many Eastern European Jews were involved in classical Reform Judaism because it was a transplant from Germany. Its earliest proponents were German-American Jews, and so the two, especially in Cincinnati, became intertwined.